our skin. It's the largest organ in our body and one of the first qualities people notice about us. There are many factors that affect the tone, texture, and firmness of our skin, such as the products we use and the lifestyle choices we make. Welcome to Living Well with Robin Stoloff, empowering you to live a healthier life. Joining me now is a woman who has taken matters into her own hands, literally. Rachel Pontillo is an expert in formulating natural skincare products at home, and she teaches a course on how we can do it ourselves. She's the best-selling author of Love Your Skin, Love Yourself, and The Sauce Code. Rachel is a sought-after expert guest and speaker in the areas of holistic integrative skincare and nutritional aesthetics. She's been featured on ABC, Fox, Today.com, Yahoo, Insider, and more. Welcome, Rachel. Thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure to be here, Robin. Thank you for having me. You are so interesting. I love what you've been doing using products at home. What got you into this field? I always say I got into this field by necessity and also with my mother's influence because my mother always was making some sort of concoction in the kitchen or in our home, whether it was cooking, we had a huge garden or some sort of a DIY remedy, mashing up vitamins, mixing it in with yogurt and honey and stuff like that. Even making things like hair products and Halloween costumes. She always believed and taught me that anything you can make at home is always going to be better quality than what you can make at the store. And that's something that's really stuck with me. And I struggled with breakouts ever since I was a young tween starting around age 10. And it really persisted all throughout my teen years into my 20s and unfortunately even into my early 30s. And I would try various things to clear it up. Some things would work for a little while. Some things would not work at all. Some things would make matters worse, but nothing actually cleared it up completely until I did take an integrative approach to my own skin wellness by making changes in my diet and lifestyle. But then also, once I did that, I was able to shift away from many of the super harsh acne products out there, which did not make my skin feel great. And I was able to use my own creations, which I made with all natural ingredients that were really rich in vitamins and essential fatty acids and um, antioxidants and all these wonderful things. And my skin has just been thriving ever since then. And I built not one, but two businesses around that. That is wonderful. And briefly, just tell us about those businesses. Yes. So I teach an online course called Create Your Skincare Pro. I also offer private consulting um, at createyourskincare.com for skin wellness, as well as skincare brand consulting. And I teach people who are interested in starting or growing their own plant-based skincare business how to do that, how to choose ingredients, formulate products, market, and sell them to their ideal customer. And then I'm also the president and co-founder of the Nutritional Aesthetics Alliance, where we are advancing an integrative approach to healthy skin. And we teach skincare and skin wellness professionals how to create their own programs and offerings around integrative skin wellness. It is really one of the first things people notice about us is our, is our skin. People don't think about yes. that, but it's true. And when you say integrative approach, what exactly does that mean? I like to say that it really is looking at each person individually and where they're coming from. So what works for one person might not work for someone else, as I'm sure, you know, we've all experienced when we have someone who's using the same products and it works great for them. And then we try it and it's like, oh, that did not work for me. What's wrong sure. with me? Well, nothing is wrong with you. It's just the fact that everybody needs different things, both with their diet, as well as with their topical skincare routine, and also what we have in our environment, in our lifestyles, we have to modify that. So if someone comes to us with a skin issue like acne, or hyperpigmentation, or rosacea, or if they're showing some signs of premature aging that they would like to maybe slow down a little bit, we look at you know, what is going on in your life that brought you to this point? And then we try to design a lifestyle that will be conducive to helping them get the skin results that they want now, but also to maintain those for years to come. So I look at topical skincare, I look at the food, I look at the lifestyle, and I also look at the mindset because oftentimes we get in our own way. 
Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I always say that uh, our skin remembers every bit of sun exposure, every bit of whatever we've done to it. And it adds up over the years. When you're in your 20s, sure you might does. not think about it. But as you get a little bit older and you start to say, what is that? Is that dirt? Oh, no, it's a line. Oh, darn. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just, how did that happen? So it's very important. Our lifestyle choices make a big difference. Of course, we all know wear your sunscreen, stay out of the sun. Yes. That's a big, big part of it. Not everybody listens to that, but we need to wear sunscreen all the time. And our moisturizer, we know that in the morning when we get up, even on a cloudy day. But what are some yes. other choices we need to make that are good for our skin? So I really want to talk about two main types of moisturizing the skin, and that is hydration and protection. They're not exactly the same thing. So hydration is when we are bringing water into the skin. And there's a lot of different ways they, that we can do that that are not actually water. A lot of the skincare products on the market, you may have noticed, are mostly water. And unfortunately, water is not the best standalone ingredient for the skin because it's a little bit too high pH for the skin, which means that using it too much can actually cause drying out, can cause irritation. So what I like to recommend is that to bring in hydration, we use things that are natural, plant-based, um, if not plant-based, then nature-based, and I'm going to explain that in a moment, but that are not only bringing in hydration, water, but are also bringing in nutrients because we have to have hydrated skin in order for the skin to be able to take in nutrients topically, which, you know, a quick analogy that I like to use, if you imagine really, really dry soil. Say there's a plant that you haven't watered in a really long time, the soil's kind of dry and it's cracked. You pour water on it, what happens? It feeds up, right? You have to water it slowly so that it can slowly hydrate and then it is when it, that's when it can start to absorb. But if you add too much hydration, it overflows and it becomes saturated and can't take any more in. But if you don't keep that hydration coming, then it dries out and we start all over again. So the skin is kind of the same way. We have to keep that hydration coming in and we have to keep it in. So what I like to recommend is something called honey, which I'm sure everybody knows about. This is a type of honey called Manuka honey, which comes from bees in Australia that um, I really like this type of honey because it actually contains a lot of probiotic strains, which can help to nourish what's called the skin's microbiome and that helps keep us healthy. And does honey it have itself, to be that type of honey or can it be any it does type? Not. It can be regular honey, but I do recommend a raw honey, which has not been pasteurized because raw honey still has all of the wonderful enzymes and antioxidants intact instead of just the sugars. So with the enzymes that helps our skin naturally promote exfoliation so that we don't have to do too much to it. It does it for us. And also those antioxidants, that's we, we need that in terms of nourishment to help to prevent damage from the environment and to help also repair damage that has been caused by environmental And how factors. often do you put that on? I actually recommend cleansing with it in the morning. It doesn't remove makeup, but first thing in the morning, it can be a really great way to add a boost of hydration to the skin. You just put on a little dollop, like a nickel size, rub it in with warm water, just like you would a cleanser. And even though honey is sticky, it actually removes very easily with a warm washcloth. And you will find that your skin feels a lot more hydrated and less tight than if you were cleansing with water alone or with a cleanser, which many of the cleansers out there are very drying. So another thing I like to recommend is that people keep some sort of an herbal tea on hand that they can use either as a facial toner or a spritz. I actually have rose petals here. I have hibiscus and I have calendula. And I chose those specifically because rose petals and hibiscus are extremely high in vitamin C, which is so important for helping the skin stay bright and vibrant, keep an even texture, even pigmentation. And also it can just help the skin repair from environmental causes of premature aging like UV damage or pollution. So I like vitamin C from herbs because it's not as inflammatory as some of the vitamin C products that are out there on the market that you can only use at night. So I like to recommend making a tea out of those. And you can store that in the refrigerator for a few days. So you can use that also to wash your face, or you can use it to reconstitute a powder mask. I have a clay mask 
here. This is Rasool clay, which is really great for firming. And then this is matcha green tea powder, which is also phenomenal for helping the sun or helping repair sun damage. And um, if you have hyperpigmented skin, matcha or another form of green tea is definitely something you want to look for in your skincare routine. So, so you, you can make mix a paste with that? Is that how you yeah, do it? Yeah, you make a paste, mm -hmm. put it on after you cleanse and leave it on you know, while you're watching TV or whatever at night, that's when I do it and leave it on for 15 minutes and then just wash it off and then you moisturize. And that's a really great way to help to nourish and firm up the skin and add hydration while also adding nutrition. And I've also got an aloe plant here, as you see, aloe vera gel is one of the most powerful humectants that we have. What that means is that it actually binds to water molecules in the environment and it can help draw additional hydration into the skin and water or an herbal tea alone. So you don't have to squeeze it from the plant, although you can. I know a lot of people keep an aloe plant in the kitchen for burns yes. and cuts yep. and scrapes yep, and I've whatnot, which I totally recommend. But you can buy aloe vera gel. Um, I would recommend making sure that you read the label to check that it is just aloe vera gel and not other things. Sometimes when you buy it at the store, there's a whole bunch of other stuff in it that don't necessarily want, um, but that's something that you can also use as a layer of hydration after you cleanse and tone, and then it can go underneath your moisturizer. So that's, we're adding that hydration with humectants like the aloe vera gel and the honey and really nourishing types of waters like our herbal teas. And I also have something called rose hydrosol here, which is actually made using the same process that essential oils are made from. It's called steam distillation. And this is the water that collects from the rose petals as they're being distilled to make the essential oils. And the benefit of this is that you get the wonderful aromatics that you would get from rose essential oil, as well as some of the nutrients from the rose essential oil, but it's a lot less expensive. It's much easier to find and it's a lot less concentrated. What is the so it's process? Safe for daily how, how is that distilled? How do you do that? So they use usually these big copper stills where they put a very large quantity of rose petals in there with water and there's fire involved. They lit, light a fire and then that causes the water to boil and the steam takes up the water soluble nutrients as well as some of the volatile compounds that carries it up and over. And then that steam condenses back into water, but then it separates into the water, which becomes this hydrosol and then the essential oil, which gets dropped out and that's where you find your super most concentrated plant extract. So when you use the water from that process, you're getting a lot of the nutrients, but without the super concentrated strength that actually, if you were to use it too much, could be problematic. This is safe for daily use and this is safe around pets and children too. And what I love about rose hydrosol, it actually also is really high in vitamin C, but rose itself is one of the most powerful herbal allies for women, for anyone who has skin that is doing something that we might not like because it naturally is firming and astringent, but it does that in a way that's very gentle, not as extreme as some of the things that you might find like at the drugstore or something like that. And do you so make that fan. yourself? Do you make that? Actually, this I do not make because I don't have the equipment for it. This I buy from a small farm in Turkey, actually, where they've been doing this method. Their family has been producing it the same way for 200 years. That's incredible. So, yeah, it's, it's wonderful. And you can, buy, you can buy rose hydrosol and rose water elsewhere. You don't, have to, you don't have to order it from overseas. You can usually get it just at Whole Foods Market. But okay. I do well, recommend looking for organic if possible. That's interesting. Well, let's talk a little bit. You mentioned firmness. A lot of women are concerned yes. about firmness and also about fine lines and discoloration. What do we need Absolutely. to do for that? Okay. So I want to shift to talk about oils a little bit. I've got a few different oils. As you can see here, this one, it's like this lovely orange color. This is rose hip seed oil. And we're still talking about roses, which I tend to do a lot, but the rose hips are the little, um, little pods or seed pods that are left over after the petals fall off. And that is something that they press and an oil comes out. 
So with the oil, you don't actually get vitamin C because vitamin C is a water soluble vitamin, but what you do get is these wonderful essential fatty acids and rosehip seed oil is known to really help. It, it absorbs very easily into the skin because it's a small molecule and it helps to really fortify the tissues in the deeper layers of the epidermis. It's almost like if you imagine you have like a piece of fabric or a curtain hanging on the wall and it has like some wrinkles in it, it just kind of pulls it straight almost so that you're supporting how the skin holds up from the inside. And again, it does it in a very gentle way. You're not gonna feel like super tight or anything like that, but repeated use can be really beneficial. So rosehip seed oil is one that I recommend for anyone who is concerned about firmness, about fine lines, wrinkles. And, and how um, often do you use that? I actually use it in every time I um, put moisturizer on. I use these individually. I have a blend of them in this little container that I apply as a moisturizer, either as my top layer, if it's winter time to kind of add an extra layer of protection, or I put it into a cream or a lotion. This is a cold cream that I teach on my website that actually has a lot of these ingredients here. And you can do a lot of things with it. So I'm a really big fan of plant oils. Rosehip is one of my favorites. This is a green tea infused jojoba oil. You notice yes, it's this green. Very green. We should say if anyone's listening to this podcast, yeah. <laughs> they should try to go to the YouTube channel, my YouTube channel, and watch it because you have some great stuff here and it's it's really interesting to, to be watching it. Excellent. And then we have um, this is one that I love, which is called desert date oil. If you think about when we are going into winter, we're going to be putting on our heating systems, maybe our fireplaces, the air gets really dry. So it's a good idea to think about, okay, what plants grow in places where the air is really dry? What plants grow in the desert? This is one that does. So the oil from this desert date plant is actually really great to help add a little bit thicker of an emollient protection, but not mm -hmm. so thick that it stays on the surface of the skin and becomes greasy. It still absorbs. It just takes a little longer. Whereas oils like rosehip are a little bit lighter. They absorb faster. So the skin's gonna might, it, it might actually feel dry sooner. So when we are really thinking about feeling in that hydration, we want to think about oils like this. But the benefit of oils like this, these are called carrier oils or plant oils, cold pressed oils. These have antioxidants as well as the herbs, which are wonderful for just helping to neutralize damage before it happens. And also it can help repair damage that has already happened. And they also contain what's called essential fatty acids. You may have heard about the importance of like eating your omegas in your diet, yes, right? Omega course. threes, six, mm -hmm. nine and whatnot these contain those too. So they are delivering them topically, which really complements everything you're doing internally. So you're getting that inside out and outside in effect with your skin nutrition. And what these do is instead of just sitting on the surface of the skin, kind of like a Vaseline or a mineral oil would, they do absorb and they also bring in nutrients as they absorb. So this is how we feel in the hydration that we've added with the tea or with the hydrosol or with the aloe, we put on an extra layer on top with these oils. And if you don't want to do all of the DIY by having individual ingredients, there's so many wonderful creams and lotions on the market that have them made into them. Um, it's I like creams and lotions because they do contain both that water and that oil, but you do want to make sure that it does have those natural plant oils in it because if the cream or lotion just has a lot of water and not enough emollients and oils in it to help keep that water in the skin, it will just evaporate. And that usually happens before any of the vitamins that have been added have time to actually absorb. So we want those oils. And, um, you know, when we're talking about things like fine lines and sagging or dark spots, we really have to think about both that hydration, because if the skin is dehydrated, it's always going to look worse. Fine lines are going to be more prominent. Wrinkles are going to be even more prominent as well. Dark spots 
will come out more. Mm -hmm. um, even when it comes to puffiness, if the skin's dehydrated, it's going to try to hold on to whatever moisture is in there. So that might actually show up as puffiness. So there's, there's quite a lot we can do with natural ingredients. And then um, if you want, I, I did. That. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I do have this little gua sha tool, which um, has become really popular, but gua sha is a modality that is based on East Asian medicine principles. And um, if you want, we can shift to talk about that a little bit. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. And then what I'd like to ask you before we end is for just a yeah. big overview, because you went over so much stuff, just kind of <laughs> what are the steps, you know, cleansing, yeah. moisturizing, protection, just briefly as we wrap up. But let's let's talk about this tool. I, I'd love to see what that is. Absolutely. So this, for those of you who are not watching, go watch because I'm showing a beautiful jade carved gua sha tool. And uh, this is actually something that one of my students, um, she sells these along with products that go along with it. Because when you do the gua sha, you wanna make sure that first your face is hydrated, but you also wanna use an oil because you have to have a little flip on the skin as you're moving this around. So what you do with the gua sha is you basically just, it, you use strokes and you're promoting lymphatic drainage and circulation. So we want to increase blood circulation because the blood is what delivers the nutrients. And we want to also increase the lymphatic drainage because that's what takes out the trash. Anything that is stagnant, like puffiness, or if you're noticing that your complexion is looking a little lackluster, or if you have congestion, that means that there is some stuckness, some stuck lymph happening. And there are a lot of lymph nodes in the face and neck. So we can use this to very gently support at lymphatic and blood circulation. So I always recommend starting on the neck, right above the collarbone. You wanna go from the center out on both sides, very gently. And I call this unclogging the drains. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> kind of great. How they, the and do you put something on it or you, you just use that by Oil. Itself? Oil. Yeah, you, you wanna use, use your facial mm -hmm. oil first. So after you unclog the drains, we always still start with the neck back here by the ear, just gently. We don't want to put a lot of pressure, just gently pulling down. And then again, we clear the drains. We want to move it down and move it out. And then we can do the jaw. It's nice to hold it up by the ear. Again, starting at the center, working from the center up towards the ear on both sides. And then again, you pull down and clear the drains. And then you can use one of the rounder edges of the tool to start working up over the jawline in kind of under the cheekbone. And you just want to kind of go from the center outwards. And then when you get up to the temples, you want to give it a little wiggle. That's <laughs> another area. Where and very gently, right? Because we don't want to really yeah. pull on our skin. We're not trying to do like any major sculpting here. There are techniques for that. But right now we want to just promote drainage because if we don't have good drainage happening, whatever we do is, is going to be like a half effort. So wiggle around the temples, wiggle like right at the corner of the jaw. And then after kind of every part that you roll over, again, from the center out very gently. Then on the forehead, you can start at the area between the eyebrows and at an angle. You don't want to be flat. You want to be angled. Just kind of pull up and then go out from the center. That is so side. interesting. I never knew about that. So I yep. I'm going to try that. <laughs> Wiggle in the temple and then go back under the jawline and then back down the neck and clear the drains again. And this literally can just be two to five minutes a day. It can be done either in the morning, like if you have to be on camera or if you have a meeting or you're gonna go see people and you don't wanna look puffy, you can literally relieve puffy eyes in just minutes using this technique. That's and then amazing. I also like to do it when I'm relaxing at night after I've done my skincare routine, I might, ha might have my moisturizers and my oils on before bed to just help me relax. Because it's now, also some people are probably relaxing. looking at this going, oh my gosh, there's so much stuff, but it really doesn't take as long as you might think. And it, it's it's worth doing because it is it's something correct. that uh, affects you know your appearance and how you feel about yourself. And, and it's just general good health care, not just skin care. 
Well, and that's a really good point, Robin, because skin, as you mentioned at the beginning, is our largest organ and it performs a lot of functions. It's responsible for a lot of things. It does support our immune function. It supports our nervous system. Um, it supports detoxification and it does take in certain nutrients. So it is important to view the skin as an organ, just like you would any of the organs inside the body. And we're not just talking about this for vanity's sake, although quite honestly, there's nothing wrong with appreciating beauty for beauty's sake, right? Absolutely. So yeah, you wanted me to go over just like just a quick regimen. Briefly, right? just to wrap it up and just say, this is what Absolutely. you do in a day. Yes. Okay. So what? I, this is what I personally do. Okay. So in the morning, my skin's not all that dirty because I just slept. So I only cleanse either with honey or if I have some tea made, I'll use that. And it's nice and cool. Help me wake up. So I literally just splash that on my face, dry it off. I use a spritz of the hydrosol just to add a little extra moisture. And then I use a couple of pumps of my facial oil and I just apply that face and neck. Done. That's it. And then, well, if I'm going outside, I do use sunscreen. I do want to point that out. Of course. So at night, or after a workout, if I've either been sweating a lot or I'm washing off a face full of makeup, I actually am going to oil cleanse first. And I will take one of these oils. I usually use jojoba for this, but you can also use olive oil. If you have drier skin, you can use sunflower oil, um, sesame oil, and just the oil itself. You just put a little bit on your hand, mix it in, and then use that oil to actually break up any of the makeup because most of the makeup that you wear is also oil-based. So the oil helps to dissolve it. And then you just use a warm washcloth to cleanse that away. So you never use and a then, scrub. You never use a scrub. I personally don't because I do, I do weekly masks and the clay itself does have a little bit of a grit. So when I remove a clay mask, it does exfoliate a little bit, but I don't like to force exfoliation because those cells that we see on the surface, we need them. They're there yes. for a purpose. So we want to protect them. So I oil cleanse to remove makeup, and then I will cleanse again to just remove that residue, usually with the honey. Um, I don't like to use foaming cleansers. I find them to be a little bit too drying. Um, when I was younger and my skin was a lot oilier, maybe I was able to use that more, but I'm 44 now. My skin is a bit drier than it was. So. You look phenomenal. You really do. Oh, so you. obviously it's working. And then and then you wrap it up with a moisturizer at night? I do. Yeah. After I cleanse, I use my hydrosol again to tone. And then I will use um, either a cream, which if especially in the wintertime, if it's dry, I like to put the cream because it has these humectants that we mentioned. This has a lot of aloe vera in it. So I put that on and then I might put even a layer of the oil on top of that before I go to sleep so that my skin is really nourished and protected so that it can recover at night. And then in the morning, I start all over again. Well, it is certainly working and it goes without saying we, we also need to eat healthy, eat a healthy yes. whole food diet with lots of fruits and vegetables because that's a very important 100%. part of skincare. Yes. You gotta we eat are. our colors. Yeah, eat our colors. Let's eat the rainbow, as they say. So yes. Rachel, if someone's interested in learning how to make their own products, wants to wants to get involved with you, how can they uh, how can they reach you? You can come on over to createyourskincare.com. I have blog posts. There are some recipes on there. There's a couple of free classes on there. There's price, there, there's classes at different price ranges. So wherever you happen to be at in your journey, I've got something for you. I'm also pretty active on Instagram at Rachel Pontillo. I share a bunch of DIY tips and skincare advice there, as well as skincare business advice. If anybody is into um, starting or growing a skincare business, I can help you with that too. But I've got a lot of resources there at your disposal, both on my site and my social media. Oh, well, I'm shocked to hear that you're 44. I thought you were in your late 20s, to be honest with you. So you look oh, fantastic. Well, thank you. <laughs> so it's obviously working. So you can speak from experience and I will put uh, links to everything in the show notes so people can reach you. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining me. That was very interesting. And thank you for being with me today for Living Well with Robin Stoloff, empowering you to live a healthier life. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll keep you updated on my most recent episode. And of course, please go to my website if you want to watch videos of these podcasts, livingwellwithrobinstoloff.com. Hope to see you again next time. Until then, please stay safe and keep living well.